I'm Bonnie Bethune. I'm the senior member services representative. Um, I get the senior because I've been here for almost 20 years and been in the industry for almost 40. Um, and so today we're doing the second leg of the USDA grant presentation where we got to actually go out and do some hands on solid waste advisory team site visits. We had five communities that all had the population of 5,500 under with a median household income um, accordingly. So we went to um, Goshen, Newbury, Tamworth, Bristol, and Thornton. Thornton also has uh, Campton and Ellsworth um, at their, using their transfer station. So as you can see, we had a bit of a range from 822 people to 2,700, um, up to almost 4,000. So what did we learn? Um, that the common challenge, there were common challenges amongst the five communities. Uh, traffic flow, increase, increasing the desire to increase recycling um, or decrease waste. Identifying scrap metal and construction debris to cut down on the hauls and storage options. And what we learned in one town, we were we were often able to apply to the next one we visited and in, in our reporting. Uh, lessons learned. It's not easy to get very busy transfer station um, staff and administration to stop long enough to have some really comprehensive visits. Um, but we managed to get the five. We were very pleased to be there. We had two on-site visits. The first one, um, we actually met with the operators first for the first hour. And the second one, we met with the town administrators or the recycling committees. So we got the two perspectives. And then the second visit, we actually got to put everybody together and talk about what did we learn? What do we want to work together on? What, are, what is our main focus going to be for the uh, report at the end? Um, then we invited five um, of those five. We had two who participated or will participate in a full cost accounting exercise. This is two hours of delving into every facet of the finances in your at your transfer station. And it's looking at all of the costs. It's looking at staff. It's looking at ad administrative time, operating costs, recyclables and waste streams. So then we, um, once we get all those SWATs done, uh, we basically got everybody on the same page and came up with three or four, sometimes five different priorities that they wanted to look at. And this is everybody working together. We were very pleased with how well the communication worked. So in Goshen, these are the people that, that helped us out. We invited operators to come in and do that solid waste advisory team, um, nitty gritty, really getting down to the nuts and bolts of what uh, the transfer stations were looking to do, hoping to do. So we had people come from um, Cornish, Lancaster, Thetford, and Unity into Goshen. And I'm happy to have some of our Vermont people come over the border, even though this was a New Hampshire focused grant. Um, and then, of course, the transfer station operators, officials, and NRA staff. Here's a picture of us standing around the sorting table in Goshen. Um, highly two-stage separation where people drop their materials on the tray and staff put it into the appropriate bins. The priorities in Goshen were how to increase recycling, how to better capture construction disposal fees, and should Goshen separate cardboard from mixed paper because they were doing dual stream where all of their fibers went in one open top container and all of their plastics went into another open top container. What came down, the suggestions that came from the SWAT team were to separate the cardboard from the mixed paper. And although these uh, prices are a little off because prices have changed drastically since July, um, it was gonna be $63 a ton more revenue by separating out the cardboard into another open top container, um, then shipping it to market as mixed paper. 
one of the educational ideas that came up from the transfer station was a sign that stated that there are 17 tons of, of fibers, mixed paper and cardboard, that they had done in 2020, I believe, was the size, the cubic yardage, the size of the Goshen Town Hall. Uh, we often have a, have a difficult time in getting residents to understand what is a pound worth of aluminum? What is a ton worth of aluminum? But I thought this was a great um, example of putting, putting some tonnage into perspective. The next town we went to was Newbury. And we had, uh, again, people from Cornish, Grantham, uh, Brian Patno joined us again. We were, in fact, twice, according to my slide. Um, and Vanessa from Unity, along with um, everyone else that came to join us. This was our biggest group. Um, this is a lot of town officials and a very um, active conversation between residents and recycling committees about what, how to improve the Newbury transfer station. Uh, the Four focuses were traffic flow and congestion, better recycling of mixed paper and commingled. Again, these are smaller towns. This is a dual stream program, although they separate out their cardboard to bail it. How to densify um, construction debris and how to recycle more. The uh, SWAT team suggested that they buy a used backhoe. They were borrowing the one or waiting for the highway department to come down the road two miles and tamp down the scrap metal and the construction debris. This didn't always happen on a time in a timely manner. So they were shipping out material um, that had really could have been pushed down and gotten more out of their um, into their containers and decrease their hauls. So we found out a couple weeks ago that this will absolutely be on the town um, ballot in March to buy a used backhoe for the transfer station exclusively. So that is very, very good news. The other uh, site that we visited was Tamworth. Now Tamworth has been talking for a number of years about building a new facility. They have decided to stay, oh, let me go back. Uh, we had um, the SWAT team from Guilford, Lancaster, Moulton Borough and Wilton. Carol Burgess uh, traveled 100 miles to help us out with the Tamworth SWAT visit. Um, Heather Herring liked to call this the last supper of recycling, because as you can see, people are all focused on the layout um, of the transfer station. They are going to stay on at the facility they're at now, but expand it and broaden it and change a lot of the traffic flow. Um, very exciting. They they've done a lot of work to get to this point where they can start to make some changes. Um, this was a little different kind of SWAT. We actually got to see what the town really wanted to accomplish by improving their facility. Again, it's going to be on the on the current site. They're going to build a new recycling building. They're going to expand the traffic lanes going into it. They're going to buy a baler. They haven't decided whether they're going horizontal or um, vertical yet. And they did a huge effort in raising funds. $493,000 in a USDA grant. Um, the, the proposals were done up by the Tamworth Foundation grant, and they've had very, very good town uh, financial support over the last couple of years and going forward. Some of the SWAT suggested um, solutions were continue to collect aluminum cans, cardboard, glass, and steel cans but add to collection mixed paper, plastics, and compost. And mixed paper, um, they're gonna decide whether to do loose or bailed. Plastics, definitely they want to do bailed and work in some composting. So they've got quite a bit of work to do. Uh, the fourth one is Bristol, New Hampshire, right next to me, I live in Ashland. So it was very fun to be working with a neighboring town. We had um, the DPW director from Ashland come over and, and give us a hand. And Shauna from San Brenton and Scott from Sunapee, all again forming that that very important hands-on SWAT team. Um, I just wanted to bring Heather into the into the fold here because we miss her a lot, um, and she was our great people picture taker. She loved to take pictures of people. 
So Bristol, um, when COVID hit, they stopped recycling, or just before that, um, when prices for single stream were very high, they stopped recycling altogether. They have made great uh, strides since then in um, improving their recycling program. What we were focusing on was uh, improving their loading dock, which basically is uh, right now is cement block and uh, earthen path up to the load to load the trailer. Um, would scale a scale be a good option for Bristol? Storage for Bristol? And what would the next item be for them to bail after cardboard, which they're doing now? Suggestions from the SWAT team were next bailed item, absolutely aluminum cans. Um, they were sending it off to a local charity, but then that fell away and they started collecting. So in order to know how many aluminum cans does it take to make a bale and a horizontal baler, they started filling up a 30 yard roll off, got to about half full, couldn't wait any longer, had to make a bale, and they ended up being able to make a bale out of half of a 30 yard roll off. Um, and then we recommended the next commodity would be plastics for them to bale. Um, again, I as I mentioned earlier, we learned a lot from another transfer station to apply to another one in our SWAT group. Um, the lines in Bristol we thought were, were very good. Um, their cardboard recycling program, which is brand new. Um, what I was intrigued with was not only their signage, but if you can see the size of that hole, they don't have an open bin for people to put their cardboard in. The people have, the residents have to break down their cardboard. They have to flatten it in order to get it into that hole. Very smart. It drops down into a bunker. You can see the holes where people put the cardboard in all flattened, drops down into a bunker. They come in with a grapple into that bunker and bring it over to the hopper to their brand new horizontal baler. So it's a very slick, very, it just makes so much sense. And I hope that people will, will think about maybe doing that same sort of process as Bristol has. So again, learned a lot from the different transfer stations. Our last one was Thornton. Again, mentioned that Campton and Ellsworth also use this facility. We had Ashlyn Littleton and Warner represented to help us out with this one. The challenges were again, tra traffic flow, hearing that a lot, increasing recycling rate, safety issues. Um, there was a lot of um, barriers that needed to be considered at the Thornton Transfer Station and economical storage. We were able to do some work using Google Maps um, and some suggestions that came up were removing some of the trees um, along the road line to give more space to the transfer station, uh, making three lanes so that people can, if they're not recycling that day, they can go right by and go to the waste stream. Um, lots of fun looking at these transfer stations in their entirety. So then we have the full cost accounting. We need two of these for our grant and we've done one in, in Newbury. We'll be doing one in Bristol. With Brian Patino's uh, help, we were able to come up with some really interesting numbers. Now it looks like there's a lot here, but if you look at, we looked at the total solid waste costs, and it wasn't just it, again, it was, it was staffing, it was um, benefits, it was the entire cost that come into running a transfer station for a town. And it worked out to be $290 was the total cost per ton to run the transfer station. The landfilling um, and the recycling was only 100 of that, that portion. The net cost per capita was, um, as you can see, the cost to landfill that material, $61. The cost to recycle, $6. Yes, it costs to recycle. We all know that, but this is a very stark difference between throwing it away and um, put it in the in the right recycling bin. The town administrator was very excited about these uh, numbers and what they actually said. My interest would be make some changes at your transfer station, go back a year and do this again and see what the difference might be and what your improvements would be. Um, 
towards the end here, this was um, a picture of the Chamoy transfer station um, that the students did. They've had a lot of student involvement and they're going to be painting some on their new recycling building. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, what's next? Um, again, more full cost accounting to be made available, hopefully in a packet that we can give towns that they can actually do their own. Uh, that's in our next grant. And then uh, the next USDA grant we actually have gotten is recycling tools of the trade, uh, really getting into the nitty gritty of waste reduction. Again, more education and what recycling partnerships there are out there that we can take advantage of. Um, again, the fine print, we were working with USDA grant and this has been um, a real pleasure to be able to get out and visit so much with these communities and, and work face to face with operators as well as that broader picture of town administrator and recycling build recycling committees so thank you very much i'd be happy to take any questions so one question i have for you bonnie is you know this swap program was really designed as a program in which NRA staff would help coordinate all of this. And there's a lot of logistics, you know, as you pointed out in terms of um, just scheduling these meetings, getting communities to all agree on what their top priorities were. That was a big challenge. If someone wanted to hold their own SWAT team and if a community wanted to do this on their own, they could do that, right? I mean, how might you think about if a community wanted to gather together their own group of experts and invite them to come and, and tour a facility? Is that something we've seen communities do on their own? I've actually seen that quite a bit. I And we recommend often, if someone has a particular problem that they're thinking about or a particular challenge, if they're looking to buy a scale, um, we often can can match those two people together either just through email or to actually go visit the site. And that has been incredibly helpful. Again, I, I call in one of my slides, I called it member helping member. Uh, there is such value to going out and seeing a situation, storage, or again, a scale, a baler, seeing it hands on. What were some of the things you do differently now that you've done it? Um, so great benefit in in absolutely bringing people in um, to get their opinions. I think we're gonna see, I think it's been happening all along. We're just hearing more about it. Hey, it's Brian. Um, I can't stress enough how happy I was to see the numbers of the full cost accounting for Newberry. Um, it shocked me how good their recycling program was um how cheap it was it was for them um i'm curious to see like year to year you know now that they have kind of the spreadsheet for one year as you said go back the following year or even the year before and compare it and you know yeah a lot of it has to do with market prices but it, as you said make a change where you see is needed and see the impact. To me, that's gonna be the more interesting thing. And to see the town administrator get so excited with the numbers yep. that, and he, and he understood them well enough. I mean, for two hours, we, we poured over these numbers, understand them well enough to be able to bring them back to his board of selectmen, to bring them back to the town. And that that was just the best just good stuff yep especially a town that doesn't bail anything really right you yeah. know just and the card for it. yes exactly mm -hmm. i was not expecting that so yeah. well and certainly our hope is that we can work with more communities to help them prepare for their own full cost accounting models so that we can see more of those numbers because it'd be very interesting to see how other communities compare to one another. And certainly if anyone wants to dig into this now, the uh, Bonnie and Brian and I actually participated in a DES uh, SWAT workshop 
where we walked participants through uh, really hands-on how to fill out this full cost accounting model. But one of our goals from this program is to actually think of ways that we can even simplify the process further and make it easier for communities to get this really useful information from their solid waste programs.